Something of those origins reveals itself thanks to today's technical achievements. Over the last years, computers are enabling us to call back the positions of sun, moon and stars in the distant past, which throws new light on what our ancestors sought in the skies above. We usually think it began here, Mesopotamia, today's Iraq. Everybody thinks that astronomy begins with the Babylonians, but in fact, in Ireland, in the Neolithic, there was a very careful study of the heavens undertaken, in which they related the sky to the ground in a very monumental fashion. In the distant Stone Age, 3,500 years before Christ, and a thousand years before history began, a little-known civilization stretching all over Europe, from Malta in the far south to the Orkney Islands north of Scotland, set its sights to the skies above. Best known by far is Stonehenge in England, built to track the cycles of the sun and moon, and possibly even capable of calculating and predicting their eclipses. Much less well-known, but at least as fascinating, is what remains here in Ireland. The Boyne is Ireland's foremost river in terms of its mythical and historic significance. Its name means the river of the white cow. It is significant that in ancient times, the Milky Way was known as the way of the white cow. Perhaps they saw the river on the ground as being a reflection of the river of the sky. Scattered along its banks are a multitude of passage tombs, the most famous of which is Newgrange, Bruna Bogna, the womb of the white cow. 5,500 years ago, passage tombs arose here with deep and narrow corridors. On the shortest day, December 21st, people waited here for the pale dawn of midwinter solstice, hoping the light would overcome the darkness, or with the ashes and bones of their dead, waiting for the last sun's light, to enter the deep corridors. The moment the sun touches the earth opens a special portal to the stars and after sunset then the Neolithic soul was transported to the stellar realm in the afterlife. The way up high. The shaman traveling the Milky Way is the Swans constellation. An image from prehistory which may have an echo here in Newgrange. As long as people can remember, swans came here to stay the winter. In Irish myth, New Grange was built by Angus, son of gods. In his dreams, he was visited by a beautiful woman, Care, but she vanished every time he closed his arms around her. Helped by the gods, he found her in the end, surrounded by swans. And the two of them took the form of swans and flew back, and then they flew inside New Grange. And of course, Newgrange has a passage which is cross-shaped and brings to mind the cross of the sky as if they were trying to replicate the sky on the ground again. And swan and winter solstice combine here in another way. Now if we follow the line of winter solstice sunrise from Newgrange out into the distance, it intersects with another passage tomb in the distance, 15 kilometres away, called Fornox. Here we are, looking out through the narrow passageway towards the northeast. What we're trying to do here is to recreate the sky as it would have appeared to the astronomers sitting in this chamber 5,000 years ago. If we take the computer back to the time when Fornox was built, we see Deneb, the bright star of Cygnus, skimming the horizon, setting momentarily in the middle of the night. And then at the dawn of winter solstice, someone sitting here 5,000 years ago would have been able to see the bright swan star Deneb rising off the northeast horizon out through the passageway and it would have become merged in the dawn of the winter solstice. Could it be that the ancient astronomers used Deneb to track the coming of the winter solstice?